And he hears me when I call And he hears me when Tonight somebody's relationship with God will be rekindled again This message may not be for everybody but maybe because of the things that you have gone through recently the devil has lied to you to make you feel God has forgotten you and you are alone the message tonight is meant to restore your hope in the words of the master he says I will never leave you nor forsake you you have to believe God if you will believe no one you have to believe God I will never leave you nor forsake you. Where you are in life does not really matter. What matters is who is with you. Because when the four Hebrew boys, the three Hebrew boys rather, were thrown into the furnace, it became comfortable for them, not because they changed location, but because of the one who was with them. And so this week, one of the days while I was praying, I finished praying and I laid down on the bed. And in a very brief vision, I just saw written on the air, knowing God as Father. That's the message tonight. Knowing God as Father. I'd already prepared what to teach this Sunday and next Sunday, but God had to interrupt it. Knowing God. As father. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 to 16. We'll be very brief tonight. Romans 8 15 to 16. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out. Abba. Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. That we are children of God. Knowing God as Father. We have received the spirit of adoption, not rejection. That means that every time you are feeling rejected at any point in life, you are beginning to operate or you are beginning to be influenced by a spirit that is not of God. God will never reject his own. God does not condemn, he convicts. So when you fall into a sin or you fall into a trespass, you have to be careful to understand the boundary between condemnation and conviction. He convicts us unto repentance. It is Satan that condemns us unto guilt. That feeling that makes you carry the weight of your sin is no longer of God. Your feelings, your emotions are now being manipulated by a spirit that is from hell. Why will God want you to carry the weight of your sin when Jesus took it and nailed it on the cross? The Bible says in Colossians 2 verse 14, having blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was written against us, he took it and nailed it to the cross. When he said it is finished, it truly was finished. In 2 Corinthians 5 21, he says, For he made he who was without sin to become sin for us, that we should become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The righteousness of God in him, Christ Jesus. So you have to be careful. And we are not teaching this to bring licentiousness. We are not saying go and misbehave. This is actually the fundamentals for the teaching of holiness. You have to be careful to differentiate between condemnation and conviction. He say, if we say we have no sin, we make ourselves liars. He say, if we say we have no sin, we make him a liar. If we say we have not sin, we make our, we ourselves liars, and the truth is not in us. He say, but if we confess our sins, First John one nine, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And in verse seven. He says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And he says that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from unrighteousness. So when you are overtaken by a fault 
and you become aware of it and you turn to the Lord in repentance, instantly that work of sin and the effect against you has been terminated. The next feeling of being condemned and feeling rejected away from God is no longer God's affair. That one is now between you and another spirit. And that is the reason why it takes the mentality of a son to truly approach God as father and to truly be set free from that feeling of condemnation and guilt. Knowing God as father. In the Old Testament, God was given several names. These names were coined out of the encounters that God had with men. God will look for a man in a generation and establish a covenant with that man. And then on the strength of that covenant, a dimension of God will be revealed to his generation. So his generation or the people within his territory are at the mercy of the God that is revealed through his covenant. In as much as he didn't experience all of God, it was just a side of God he experienced. For instance, if God revealed himself to that man as a healer, he was called Jehovah Rapha. That is not all that God can do. That is just one amongst the many things that God can do. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he can do all things. But they called him, they knew him as Jehovah Rapha because that was all they saw about him. To another generation when he provided, he was called Jireh, the provider. But they didn't know him as the protector. They only knew him as a provider. That was why when Samson finished killing 1,000 soldiers with a jawbone of an ass, he was still about to die of thirst. Because though God had given him victory over the enemies, he needed to know Jehovah in another light. So God had several names in the Old Testament. The revelation of God as Father was enshrouded. There are pockets of scriptures where you find God intending to reveal himself as Father to his people. For instance, Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 6, when Moses was making his discourse to the children of Israel in his final words. And Isaiah 63 verse 16. These are pockets of scriptures where God attempted to reveal himself as Father. But never before the coming of Jesus did men relate with God as Father. God was spirit of course and men were but flesh. How can you call God your Father? God revealed himself to the Hebrew people. And if you check the Hebrew word Father, which is what we are going to explore tonight, you will realize that the meaning of the word Father in Hebrew and the meaning of the word Son in Hebrew are very powerful and sacred terms. A son literally means the very expression of something. So if you say, I am a son of God, it meant all that people needed to do to see and know who God was, was to look at you. And so because God was a spirit and they related with him from afar, remember the old covenant, they will be outside and the Shekinah was inside and they didn't even know when it left that place. Because when Jesus died and the veil was torn into two, there was no Shekinah there. Yes or no? That means it wasn't there forever. It left. It departed. Many times it departed from them. But Jesus, when he came on the earth, he manifested and attempted to reveal God's nature as Father. This is a different thing entirely. That this God that we know who is so powerful... Remember how many times he revealed himself to them. For instance, in Mount Sinai, they saw the fire, they saw the smoke, thunders and lightning, cloud covering the entire mountain. The mountain was experiencing earthquake. Is that the God you want to relate with as father? Is that the God that if he say, come and shake me, you will go and shake him or give him a handshake? No. In fact, they told Moses, they say, we don't want to hear him again. You just go and hear him. Let's be here. If not, we will die. But saying that God is Father meant a different thing entirely. It was a new experience that this God that was so powerful and majestic and mighty had a tender side of him that we could relate with. 
that even though he appeared like a God that can consume as the consuming fire, he was yet the God of love. It was Jesus who brought about that manifestation. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 14, that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld him even the glory of the only begotten son of the father the first time god was ever expressed in flesh how does god look it was when jesus came on the earth and you know what god used the most frail of bodies i know you see all the films that they show jesus film and all of these religious film and all of the artwork but let me tell you the truth jesus was not always looking good though because Isaiah gave us a, a perfect picture of how Jesus looked in Isaiah 53 verse 2. He said, he shall grow as a root out of dry ground. Have you planted in dry season before? A tender plant. You will notice that the plant is becoming yellow. It's almost dying. You traveled for one week, you didn't water your vegetables. When you came back, the leaves were already falling. That, the Bible says that was how he was. God never used most of the people who God used. It was not really about stature. That was why they were looking for the strength of Samson. He was not a bodybuilder. I put it to you. If not, they would have known where his strength was. That they had to bribe a harlot. And she used their bribe to enter witchcraft to find out the source of his strength. Why? He shall grow as root out of dry ground. If Samson was not really a bodybuilder as you think. All those things you see in films is just an adumbration to help our understanding. Did your Bible not say that he uses the weak things? How can you say this one is the full expression of God? How can you say that this one, we know where he was born. His parents had to run away with him so that Herod would not kill him. And you say this is God, this is God. One time in John chapter 10 verse 30. Jesus said, I and my father are one. They picked up stones to stone him. He said, we've had enough. Because in Jewish culture, there was, there was no difference between a father and a son. The son was the full expression of the father. So much so that the son will carry the father's name. You are Simon Bar-Jonah. You know what Bar-Jonah means? Bar is the Hebrew word for son. Son of Jonas. That's what it means. But when Jesus brought that revelation, he changed the experience and the template. And this message is an attempt to bring us back to that place of relationship with him. Because this is the basis of your Christian experience. Everything that you do as a believer or that you become is hinged upon the foundation of a relationship with him. The Hebrew word for father is the word Abba. The Greek rendition of it is the word Peter, P-A-T-E-R. Both of them mean the same thing. As a matter of fact, it has four major meanings that we are going to go into. Number one, it means source. It means source. So when you see that he says, Abba Father, it's still Father, Father, that's it. And remember, when Jesus was on the cross, how many times did he call the Father? Twice. My father, my father. So don't criticize people who pray and say, My father, my father. Don't criticize them. They could probably be praying from a revelation. Number one, it means source. Source there means the originator and the initiator of something, it means the pathfinder. The one through which all things consist. The originator. The one who started it. The one who births it. That's the meaning of the word source. In several renditions in scripture, God is called, for example, God is called the father of glory. In Ephesians 1.17. He said that we do not cease to make mention of you in our prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory... The word father there means source. So the source of glory. Glory is all that God has and is. Glory is the full weight and expression of a thing. 
It's not just beauty, it's beyond that. God is called the Father of glory. And the Bible says our experience as believers is from glory to glory. That means that your experience from one dimension of glory to another is coming from God. And I've said it before, that Christianity by and large is a journey into the belly of God, into the depths of God. Because He is the Father of glory. He is also called the Father of mercy in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3. The source of mercy. That's why the Bible says in Matthew 5, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain what? Mercy. Because he is the source of mercy. So if you see a man having the ability to show mercy and kindness, that man, one way or the other, has a relationship with Abba, the source of all mercy. That God can look at 100 sins that you committed and pardon you. You know, mercy is the bias system of God. It's not favor, it's mercy. If you put mercy and favor on the same table, I will take mercy and leave favor. If you put it for me to choose. Because mercy is like, if you are praying for mercy, it's like a universal prayer point. Everything is captured in mercy. You can pray mercy for promotion. You can pray mercy for deliverance. You can pray mercy to know more of God. Moses was on the mountain 40 days, 40 nights, no food. Twice. Can you do that one? No. But when God shows you mercy, you can be eating yam on your table and it takes you into an experience for five minutes and you come back with that experience and change your world. He showed you mercy there. And that's why if you are pursuing God, if you are going on an adventure with God, don't think it's your prayer and your fasting that does it. No. It conditions you. It's you that it changes. It doesn't affect God. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? It doesn't. Because occultic people fast. And boy, they are fasting. We can't try it. I was told the story of a man who wanted to see the devil. He joined the occult. And he was desperate to rise. And they told him, if you want to see the devil, because that's like the highest point. You know, the deception in the kingdom of darkness is so much that some witches may never see the devil till they die and go to hell. Say amen to that. So don't put your hand there. I'm telling you the gospel truth. Where was I now? So they said he was going to see the devil. He had to fast for 11 months. 6 to 6. And he must not sleep in the afternoon. After about 5 months, he mistakenly slept one afternoon. Then they came to him and said, you are failed. Go and start again. 11 plus 5, 16. After the 11 months, Satan appeared to him and said, What do you want? Can you do that one? But he showed you mercy. Ephesians chapter 2. But God was rich in his mercy towards us. That though you were dead in trespasses, he raised you up and sat you with Christ in heavenly places. What did you do? You still don't even want to come to church. But it doesn't take away that you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Because they delay your salary, you refuse to pay tight. It doesn't take away your authority. He still left you there. Let's leave that. Maybe one day we'll come and talk about mercy. The source. Abba. The source of all life. The source of all existence. The one who began the beginning. In the beginning, God. That's how your Bible puts it, isn't it? Even the beginning was in God. It was God that made the beginning to manifest. That's why the end of your Bible is not an end. It's a beginning. At the end of Revelation, you say, I, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. <laughs> That's why he's called Alpha Omega, not Alpha and Omega. The beginning end is a perpetual continue you can't say he is the beginning and the end there's no break it's a deliberate existence he was existing on his own it was out of his love he decided that i will create a place called earth and put a man there who is lower than the angels and give him authority over that place such that if i need to do anything there the man needs to permit me to come the source oh that's the truth the source. 
Number two, the meaning of the word Abba, sustainer. I've told you before that the source of a thing determines the sustenance of that thing. <laughs> you know, it's not everybody that begins something and sustains it. Is that true? When a young man gets a lady pregnant and denies the pregnancy and goes, is he the sustainer of that child? No. Only for him to wake up in the future when the child has become great and come and claim that. Hi. I wanted to say something now, but let me just, let me leave that now. That is why you see, fatherhood is beyond being a man. I hope you know. Because if you find all these qualities in anything or any creature, it has best adumbrated God's personality as father. So you can be a woman and yet God can use you. So God can outsource from your secret place a revival within a nation. John Wesley and Charles Wesley, great revivals of history. It was the prayers of their mother that birthed those men and what they manifested. The sustainer. As sustainer, he's the one that gives longevity for process. He's the one that gives longevity. He doesn't just begin it, he continues it, he sustains it, he gives it longevity. In fact, his name is El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. That's the meaning. It has two meanings, the almighty God and the multi-breasted one. It's like a dog with breasts all around and the milk is coming out from every nipple. And one puppy is trying to suck. The puppy becomes confused, where do I suck from? Because milk is coming out of everywhere. That is the very illustration for the multi-breasted one. So that's why when you cry to God and you are depressed because of your lack, God does not seem to respond by crying back to you. He gives you an instruction. Because your entire lack in your lifetime as a human being cannot withstand the almighty sustenance of God. That's why he could speak to Abraham. He said, come out of your father's house, your nation, your kindred. He said, and I will take you to a land I will show you. And in that land, I will bless you and make you great. It was not about where you are coming from. Why will you tell him to leave his father? What of the inheritance he has been working for and receiving? God said, leave that. If you receive that one, your father will take glory in, you, in himself. He said, come to a land I will show you. Abraham got to the land and it was a dry land. The person who even chose a big land and a better land was Lot. The Bible says in Genesis 13 that he saw the vegetation of the place that was towards Sodom. He chose that place. It was a desert that God gave Abraham. But you know, God actually didn't give Abraham that land. That land was not the land of inheritance. That land was the land of positioning. Because in Genesis chapter 13, in the second to last verse, he told Abraham, he said, from where you are, lift up your eyes. That's a message for another time. Maybe at the end of this year. From where you are, lift up your eyes. That is why Israel, in as much as it is in a desert region, they are one of the highest exporters of agricultural products. We that have arable land, what are we exporting? It was not a land of inheritance. It was a land of positioning. He kept him there so his eyes can see the ends of the earth. Because he told him, he said, look northward, southward, eastward, westward. He said, walk through the length and breadth of that land. He said, for I have given you. Did the Bible not say that where the stole of a foot step on, God has given you for possession. It was not a land of inheritance. It was a land for positioning. So who told you that Meduguri is your land of inheritance? This is where he's positioning you to see the nations. From here. From here. Sustainer. Psalms 104 verse 27 to 28. Are you getting blessed? He said, these all wait for you. All of creation, they wait for you. That you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open your hand and they are filled with good. The sustainer of all. The one who sustains all and is sustained by none. El Shaddai. 
if you know God as the sustainer, you will not be afraid of what man says to you. When an uncle disappoints you, you will not be afraid. God just excused him the honor of being part and parcel of your lifting. David said, I'll look up to the hills from whence comes my help. Not the hills. He said, my help cometh from the Lord. Not the hills. The hills was Mount Zion, where the temple was in Jerusalem. It was a place of position. It was from there I will look up. My help cometh from the Lord. Sustainer. Number three, it means provider. Provider. Jehovah Jireh. The God who provides. Even in a, in a, on a mountain where there was no animal, he stopped Abraham from killing his child. And he said, turn. And Abraham saw a ram that was caught there. That ram was not there before they got to the mountain. He only proved to him that I'm the God, your provider. He can bring water out of stones. He can make rain become food for mankind. For 40 years, they didn't understand it. They called him manna. No science could explain it. He can do and undo. He can use any situation to provide for you. He can make it is when you are in a place stranded, no network. And then he can send help in a way that will dazzle you. That's the God, the provider. When he calls himself father, it means provider. That's why, you see, <laughs> that's why as a father, when you see the devil attacking your finance as a man, what the devil is attacking is your ability to project God as the provider, Abba, to your family. And that, that's, that's exactly what he's trying to do. Because God said, Jesus said, if you who are evil men know how to give good gifts, even in your fallen state, your evil state, you can still know what it means to provide for your children. He said, will a, a child ask his father for bread and he gives him stone? Will he ask him for fish and he gives him a serpent? Will he ask him for egg and he gives him a scorpion? If you who are evil men know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father not give you good things? James 1, 17, he said, every good and perfect gift cometh down from the father, the source, Abba, the provider. Before God sent you on earth, every provision needed for you, for you to fulfill destiny had been made. That's why Paul says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Glory existed before time. So some of us cry over spilled milk. Some helpers are not supposed to be in your life forever. They are supposed to be there for a season. And now that season is over where God wants you to transit to greater possibility. And the helpers leave and you are crying after them. Why pursue Egypt when the promised land is ahead? Men are just channels. They are just bodies. They can change. It's the provider you should hold on to. When, when we started this work, I cried to God and I pleaded with him. I said, please, don't allow me to beg for myself. Don't allow me to borrow for myself. And God came to me and told me, he said, in this dry land, I will prosper you. And show you that when I call a man, I'm able to fund that calling. Provider. Provider. Jare, you are enough. Jare, you are enough. I will be content in every circumstance. Jare, you are enough. I'm telling you, sometimes your patience will be tested. Just keep waiting, he will show up. Keep waiting there. You know what? The, the Bible calls him the father of spirits. He can appear to somebody in the night and say, from today, give this man one million every month till he's dead. Who are you? I don't know. But God said this. Let me pray for you. Anyone that is going through any form of lack right now, 
that the God that I serve, that you also serve. The God that has blessed me and has blessed us to this point in a dry land. May that God show up for you before the end of this month. May he show up in a mysterious way for you this month. May that God raise strangers to help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strangers. The Bible says strangers shall stand and feed your flock. Strangers. People who don't know you but they just they stand and do everything possible that you are helped to where you should be. Strangers. Strangers. So you travel and come back a trip of one week and realize you didn't spend anything. You didn't call anybody. But as you entered that place, God began to bring them together. Resources and people everywhere. Strangers. Please be seated. I'm almost done. It's a reality. Oh. Don't be deceived. I'm telling you, this is real. If God shows you, you will know it's not about your NGO job. It's not about your lecturing job. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by a word. Every word that proceeded from God. And then finally, he is protector. He is protector. He's not just your source, your sustainer and your provider. He protects you. He defends you. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. The Lord which made heaven and earth. Suffer thy food, thy food to be moved. The Lord who keepeth thee, he shall not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is my keeper, the Lord is my shield. Upon the right hand. the words. Though the sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. That means you are immune in every season. Preserve the soul even forevermore. not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. That means you are immune season after season. Unusual immunity around your life. People just look at you from afar and see you frail until they try you. Until they try you. Please. Until the witch in your house try me. Tell them <laughs> we are up for trials. Sharaba <laughs> taborokosia. It said, be not afraid, for they that are with you are more than they that are against you. Ye have got little children and has overcome the world. For greater, somebody say greater, is he that is with it. <laughs> you have to know this side of God to do ministry in this battle. It's not, it, I didn't hear, I didn't copy somebody. I didn't see all that. This is not youthful exuberance. I know the God I serve. Recently I traveled, was in a plane, landed. Only for three days later I saw that that plane was under investigation. They say it carried contaminated fuel. 
And technicians said that because of that fuel, it could either explode in the air or just fall like a stone. The same aircraft I, I traveled in. You heard the news, bar? I was on that aircraft. Boy, you can't crash. Not because I'm an apostle. No, this is not about... The office of an apostle has his own. Oh, and this is me, a son of God, my father. I know something. I know something. Not by road accident, not by air, not by land. You now see that defense in this life is not really by what you have. Oh. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. It's by what you know. We remember the name of the Lord. There are many rich people who don't have the defense, half the defense that you have. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5. What did he say? He said, I will be to them a world of fire. And the glory in their midst. I will be to them a world of fire. <laughs> Tell the demon to enter. I will be to them a world of fire. The God that answers your enemies with thunder. Psalms 81 verse 7. He said, you called on me and I answered you from the secret place of thunder. That's how he answers them. When they call your name on that mirror, when they invoke your family name, it's thunder that comes. The Bible, and that's why you have, you, have, you have dodged many arrows. The enemy is more surprised and frustrated than you, that you are still alive. Why? Because Abba is your protector. You say, Apostle, but I don't have anything. It's not about what you have physically. He has a mandate on your life. There is something, there is a purpose on your life. And until you fulfill it, no demon from hell can touch you. Jesus said, because I live, ye shall live also. Ha! Because he lives, I can face. You know what? I'm done with the message. That, that I, I, I have some. I have not spoken. But we have to finish here. Oh, fear is gone. Oh, fear is gone. Because I know He owns my My life is worth the living Because it lives Because it lives I can face tomorrow My God, my God, I feel the presence of God here tonight. Brothers and sisters, this is all that God is to you as Father. He's your source. He's your sustainer. In that affliction, is your sustainer. That's why you didn't die. They say people with sickle cell don't pass 22. You are 30 years now. Why didn't you die? He sustained you through the fire. He's your provider. And above all is your protector. Four reasons why you must know God as Father. Number one, for to build an effective relationship with God. Don't worry, get the message. No need to write, get the message. You know, the devil can do ev almost everything but one thing. He cannot pray. That's why he is mad when you pray. Because he cannot dare to call God our Father. Jesus said, when you pray, say what? That's why he's mad when you pray. He's doing everything to frustrate your prayer life. They didn't pay you. It's not about your pay. Your pay. It's about your prayer life. All these problems around. You are carrying a cause. This person is delaying. You went for an interview. They didn't give you the job. This and that. All this. They are pack. It's your relationship with God. Because he's crazy. When he sees you call God my father. We have this spirit in us by which we cry. Abba. God doesn't give him the attention he gives us. So he's mad about it. When you know this, this night you will go back and decide, like the psalmist, he say, I will bless the Lord at all times. 
Hmm? Number one, you need to build a, an effective relationship with God when you know Him as your Father. Number two, for growth and edification. Because He's your Father, He's your sustainer. He sustains you all through. I'll give you the remaining two next Sunday. Lift your hands and bless the Lord. Lift your hands and bless Him. Magnify His name. The Bible says, Be, Behold, what manner of love the Father has given to us that we should be called sons of God. He said, But Apostle, I'm broke. Yes, you are broke, but you are still a son. He said, Apostle, I carry three courses. I may repeat, you are still a son. He said, Apostle, I went for the interview, and this is the third interview this year. No job. You are still a son. You still have the right to call him your father. And if you who are evil men know how to give good things to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father he has called you to a divine purpose he has predestined that you will be called unto glory give him praise and give him glory tonight my life is worth the living just because he lives Because I know He owns my future Yes, He does My life is worth If it's your Father He's saying to you Ask what you will And I will do it for you in John 16, 24, he says, Before now you have not asked. He says, Ask and receive. I want to give you two minutes. I want you to cry to heaven, to your father. That request in your life, that burden in your heart, that desire that seems to tarry long, that expectation that seems to wait too long. I want you in two minutes to open your mouth and cry to Abba. Talk to your source in two minutes. Cry unto him like a child. The Bible says by the spirit of adoption we cry, Abba, Father. Cry to him and say, Lord, it is time. It is time for you to be married and settled. It is time for that miracle job. It is time for a promotion. It is time for new dimensions in the spirit. It is time for greater experiences in the glory. It is time for that attack of witchcraft. That cycle of limitation to come to an end. I can hear you pray. Come on, come on. Come on, cry to him. He says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall not. You shall find. No. And the door shall be open. And often as I believe, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Let my whole life be expressions of your grace. We cry of a father, we cry of a father. Come on, cry to him. Enough is enough. It is time for that prayer to come to an end. It is time for that vision to be over. I ought to have a father. Yeah. 
your sustainer, your provider, your protector, your defender by day and night. He that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumber. Who told you he has given up on you? Who told you he has forgotten you? This is your set time for a miracle. This is your set time for favor. This is your set time for a victory. Hallelujah. From today, go back and relate to him as father. He did not forget you. He did not forsake you. Don't believe the lies that the devil whispered to you. Were there not good days before now? Were there not days where you enjoyed his goodness? Who told you that he will leave you in this affliction? This affliction was meant to try you. Because every son is chastised. To the end that a glory will be revealed through your own life. He said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that is to be revealed. Friends, I bring you a word from God. Your father, that there is a glory ahead of you. And the word is that the season for that glory has come in your life. Some of you has just some of you have just successfully completed a season of trial and heaven has marked you. And the days ahead are the days where God will lift you. He will lift you before the same people who mocked you. He says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, of my mockers, of my humiliators, so that the same people who said nothing good will come out of her, with their eyes they will see and behold the praise of God coming out of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your season has come. The Lord said I should tell somebody your season of announcement, praise, and celebration has come. Yes, that's a word for one person. Your season of announcement, praise, and celebration has come. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our lips with joy. Then even the heat is set among them. The Lord has done great things for them. I prophesy a season of great things for you. A season of great things. A season of great things. Greater exploits. Greater glory. Greater possibilities. And I declare that season comes now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, shout a bigger amen. Clap your hands and give him the praise and the glory. 